Say what you want about Mike Pence, but on January 6th, he stayed in the Capitol as a mob attack that wanted to kill him. They were chanting, hang Mike Pence. He refused evacuation by the Secret Service, defied President Trump's orders, and voted to certify Joe Biden as president. That is as close as we have gotten in recent times to a profile in courage. With that, we bring in a man with more moral courage and personal integrity of any politician I know, former ambassador to the Vatican, former California, pardon me, former congressman from Florida, and businessman Francis Rooney. Uh, ambassador, it's good to see you, sir. Is there a reason that America does not have better choices and it seems as though Jefferson is correct? Well, I, I think the competency to get elected is to know how to speak, not necessarily how to do anything or lead. And we seem to be self-sorting for a lot of weak people who will do anything to stay in their office. That's why I pushed for term limits when I was in Congress. I remember you pushed for term limits, and I think it was Leader McCarthy who wasn't too happy with you, right? I mean, I don't think Mitch McConnell was too happy either. Why is that? If, if term limits are so popular uh, with, the, with the voters, why are politicians so scared of them? Well, because they want to keep their job. It's the best thing that ever happened to them. They have people treating them with adulation. They have staffs. Some of them, it's the most money they've ever made in their life, which is hard to believe. And uh, they'll do anything to stay there. And so the whole system, as Alexander Hamilton prophesied, has become a rent-seeking program. <laughs> well, Hamilton uh, has been proven correct, as has Jefferson. My friend Michael Vaccaro, who's the bureau chief for News Nation, longtime correspondent both at the White House and in Congress, made a great point that one of the reasons we have all gotten so soft is because we've been allowed to fight with each other. Whereas during the Cold War, in the time of great American expansion, we all had a common enemy. In some sort of perverse way, uh, is Vladimir Putin going to once again become and give us a common enemy and then we can get better people in office? You know, I think that's a really good point. You know, there's an expression in Spanish, there's no small enemy. You, you've got to have something to hold you together, and we haven't had it for a long time, and we're degenerating into the kind of internecine uh, discourse that you're talking about. And maybe maybe this would be enough to do it. But you look at the optics of, the, of what you were just speaking about, of everybody going out of town, instead of having a joint session of Congress to approve money to support the Ukraine, you got to wonder what those optics say. Yeah, the one person who is going to go overseas, Anthony Blinken's overseas right now, and, and you and I talked uh, earlier this week, uh, people are giving him high marks, and perhaps with good reason. We'll see how this uh, turns out. But Kamala Harris is heading to Poland uh, on Wednesday. Her notable trips have included uh, Munich, France, uh, back in November 2021, June 2021, Guatemala and Mexico, August 2021, Vietnam and Singapore. Take a listen to some of the sound bites from those trips. I mean, listen, guys. We're talking about the potential for war in Europe. I mean, let's really take a moment to understand the significance of what we're talking about. We campaign with the plan. Uppercase T, uppercase P, the plan. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I, I mean, I don't know. And that is one of our highest, if not the highest priority right now. And a big area of focus for me. Does the rest of the world in Europe, where you spend so much time as both an ambassador and in business, take her seriously? I can't imagine why. I'd sure put my money on Secretary Blinken if it were me. I agree with you. What, and I'm wondering, as you've watched and studied the Europeans, you've been with them for a long time, the leadership and the, and the senior politicians over there, how do they view our politicians back in the United States and where are they looking now for leadership? Well, I think they're looking back to us a little bit. I think what President Biden's done uh, to, to unify France and Germany and the rest of the European community has been positive, given some of the chaos that happened uh, recently. I'm so glad to see Germany step up. Let's hope they'll keep it that way when they find out there's a price to pay to write those checks. But uh, they've at least uh, done something better than they've done in a long time. You, did Vladimir Putin unite Europe once again, or did... Joe Biden. Oh, I, I think Putin has been the big, uh, the big uniter here. Biden at least cleaned up the tone that the United States is here for Europe. But yeah. this Putin thing has brought, as you said correctly, has brought everybody together. You know, the guy only respects strength. 
And as you alluded to in your lead in about the congressman going out of session, we need to show strength. We need a Theodore Roosevelt to walk softly and carry a big stick around here right now. Yeah, well, we've got Boris Johnson, who seems to be uh, at least emerging as a Churchillian like figure. So we'll see if we get a, a Franklin Roosevelt. Uh, congressman, it was good to see you. Ambassador, thank you for your time as always. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.